All right, hi everyone. This is the Nernst Potential Calculation. So any cell that has electrical charge or a difference in electrical charge across the membrane has something called a membrane potential. This is measured in voltage or because the cells are so tiny, tiny amounts of voltage which are millivolts or one one thousandth of a volt. The voltage of the membrane will change when ions move in and out of the cell. So for ions, we're commonly talking about sodium ions, potassium ions, chloride ions, calcium ions, um, others too, but those are the common ones. The ions will move in and out of a cell only if specific channels for those ions are open or if the specific transporters for those ions are active. So it looks like this. You have a cell sitting in a dish or maybe sitting on a slice or, or um, within an in vivo model. And you will take an electrode here and record the inside of the cell by opening up the membrane. There's some complicated techniques for doing this, which we're not going to get into. And then you will also have, not shown here, a ground electrode which will be outside in the solution. And you're measuring the difference between the inside of the cell and the solution outside of the cell. And that difference is the membrane potential. So electrical and chemical gradients are going to be very important for looking at the dynamics of membrane potential. So electrical activity within a cell can change when these positive or negative ions move across the membrane. So ions will move with concentration gradients. This would be a chemical gradient. And we all know this would be diffusion from high to low concentration. And that's specific to each ion. Ions will also move with electrical gradients, and that is all positive ions will move towards negative charge, and vice versa, negative ions will move towards positive charge. These forces, chemical and electrical forces, are affected by different dynamics. So chemical forces on an ion will change when concentration gradients change or when related diffusion dynamics change. For example, temperature. Higher temperature makes molecules move more and they'll diffuse faster. Electrical forces on an ion are determined by the charge of the ion in relation to the membrane potential. These forces will balance at equilibrium. So equilibrium for any given ion, say equilibrium for potassium, will be reached when its electrical and chemical gradients are balanced with respect to the total membrane potential of the cell. Another way of saying this is that when the um, equilibrium potential for the ion is the same as the voltage of the membrane, then no net movement will be measured. That doesn't mean that nothing's moving, it just means that it's moving equally in both directions and these forces are balanced. So we use the Nernst equation to calculate this. If you don't already have a piece of paper, grab one or grab some notes and let's take some time to go through the Nernst equation for looking at ion equilibrium. So in order to understand how any particular ion may affect the electrical potential of the cell, we use the Nernst equation. The Nernst equation is used to calculate the equilibrium potential based on electrical and chemical forces on an ion. So let's take a second to write this out. So this is E, or the electrical potential of an ion, is equal to RT over Z, don't worry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna define these for you, I promise, over ZF times the natural log of the concentration of the ion outside to the concentration of the ion inside. If you don't wanna use the natural log, you can also use the log base 10. You just have to multiply by 2.3. All right, so what does all of this mean? Whenever you have a large equation like this and you have many variables, you always want to list out each particular piece and understand how each is contributing to the total equation. 
So first of all, you can see that there are concentrations here. So we're looking at the difference between the outside and the inside by this ratio here. So this is specific to the ion. So let's say we're doing potassium. Then we would have the concentration of potassium outside the cell and the concentration of potassium inside the cell. Those will be given. The concentrations will affect the chemical gradient. The other variables that affect the chemical gradient are R and T. R is the gas constant, which is 8.31 joules per Kelvin per mole. T is the temperature in Kelvins. And we're going to assume body temperature. So if we assume body temperature, then T is going to be 310.15 Kelvins. The last two variables in the equation are Z and F. Z is the charge of the ion. If we're talking about potassium, it's positive 1. Sodium would be positive 1, chloride would be negative 1, and then you'd have to flip the concentrations to inside over outside. We can talk about that more later. Don't worry about that now. So Z is the charge, and F is Faraday's constant. Faraday's constant tells us the charge of one mole of molecules, which is about 9.64 times 10 to the fourth. Okay, pause for a minute and put all of the constants together and calculate what RT over ZF would be for a positive one charged ion. So take a pause for a minute and see if you can work that out. Okay, did you get it? Let's check. So RT over F, if you're going to use the log base 10, can be simplified to 61 millivolts. That is if the cell is at 37 degrees. So a quick shorthand that we often use is that the equilibrium potential is equal to 61 over Z times the log base 10 of out versus in. If you didn't pause, try again and see if you get 61 when you calculate those constants together. They're constants, meaning that those will not change as long as the temperature doesn't change. All right, now let's try some calculations for potassium, sodium, and chloride. All right, so let's start with potassium. Typical values for potassium would be around five millimoles per liter outside and 150 millimoles per liter inside. Pause to put those in and you should get minus 90. Sodium, a typical concentration, would be 145 millimoles per liter outside and 15 millimoles per liter inside. Again, pause to put those in and you should get positive 60. So if we just look at sodium and potassium now, the equilibrium potential for potassium is minus 90. That means that if the voltage of the membrane is at minus 90, then potassium will have no net movement or zero movement. It'll be equally balanced across the membrane. If the, the voltage of the membrane is at positive 60, then sodium will be equally balanced um, and will have no net movement across the membrane. Another way of saying this is that if the membrane is fully permeable to potassium, potassium wants to pull the membrane potential down to minus 90 towards its equilibrium. Or if the membrane is fully permeable to sodium, sodium wants to pull the membrane potential up to positive 60.
then we could calculate this for any given concentration in any cell. All right, more continuing with the electrical activity of cells in future videos. Good luck and let me know if you have any questions.